Well, a very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Upfield Business Podcast with me, Ian Noble, your Chamber Director here in Upfield. And uh, this is the third time we've been on. And with me this afternoon, co-hosting this show, is uh, Chris Dowling, Vice President of the Chamber. And um, uh, hello, hello. Someone who runs his own business. So hello, Chris. How are you? Yeah. Hello. I'm very well. Thank you much. How are you today? Looking forward yeah. to this podcast, the third one we're yeah. doing. We're, and we're getting better all the time. Getting better all the time. We it's, are. It's I, I'm, looking forward to, I'm looking forward to it. It seems a long time ago when we did the first one. And I was away on holiday when you and Claire did the second one, which was that great. That one was very, cool. very good, I have to say. You don't know what you missed, but it was very well, good. I, I do, because I've seen it back. I've watched it back, of course, well, you know. So, you shouldn't have said you know. that. <laughs> this one will be you better. I've watched it back. Yeah, there we go. You can um, tell me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. So um, we, we do hope that we've got some people watching us this afternoon live on Facebook. Um, and if you do, if you are watching, then do put a comment in the chat. We can see that chat. What we can't see is your name. Um, because the way it's set up, it just says Facebook user. So in your comment, do say who you are and your business so we know who's joining us this afternoon. That would be really good to know. Good. And then yeah. when we get into our guests in a minute, then um, we'll invite you to ask some questions as well. That would be really great. So um, before, we, participation. Yeah, it's what yeah, we before we bring our guests on, Chris, um, we've got a few sort of parish notices for Upfield Business News. Now, the Indeed. first one of these... Uh, I'll just want to talk about very briefly, Saturday, the 12th of August, it is wheeled on the field, on lots of field, between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's a great day of music and uh, a food festival, really. And the town council do a great job in putting this event on for Upfield. Um, do try and get along there if you can to support it. But the reason I want to just mention it today is that there are still some sponsorship opportunities available from as little as £100 to have your business banner up around Luxford Field. And you'll be supporting the event, supporting the town council, if you can help with that. So that's Saturday, the 12th of August, Wheeled on the Field, starting 11am until 7pm here in Upfield. Yeah, and it's becoming one of the established events in Upfield now as well. I think it's run for five or six years and sadly in the absence of the festival this year it's the premier sort of summertime event uh, in Upfield and it's getting good support and obviously opportunities for businesses to have a profile there and support through some sponsorship and get some return through profiles so uh, please have a look at that and uh, investigate the uh, opportunities and options which are there should be a good yeah. event Good Indeed, event. and of course it all started, Chris, is in 2016, I think, when the um, the council widened the pavements and we had all the upheaval in the high street um, that 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 year. Um, as a result of that, that's that's why the event began. So we yeah. can thank those yeah. works for that event and remember well, them fondly. <laughs> I know that I know there are many issues at the time, but I think uh, looking back, that's been good for Upfield you know, with the the wider pavements and with the better facilities that we have. Uh, Appreciate there were difficulties at the time, but uh, we've all moved on, and this is one of the, the byproducts of it, which is very, very good. So uh, let's uh, let's welcome that. Indeed, and you want to tell us about another event in early September, Chris, as well. The carnival. Yeah, the other big event uh, in the uh, next month or two, of course, is the Upfield Carnival, which will be on the first Saturday in September. Uh, I think that's about September the uh, second or third. Sorry, I haven't checked my diary, which I should have done. But first Saturday in September is always. The Upfield Carnival, as you'll all be aware, it's organised by, organised and run by, and has always been run by the Upfield Bonfire Society, and it's the start of the bonfire season in in, in Sussex. Uh, very much sort of uh, one of the sort of local uh, events that we have, something that's uh, almost unique to Sussex, and Upfield kicks off with it. So a, a very very big torchlight procession, big day in Upfield. Please do your best to support it. And if you want to take part in, have a have a float or have a vehicle, then I'm sure the bonfire committee will be very pleased to hear from you and make it available but uh, there'll be a, a good number of people in the high street that evening looking at a very very good event sadly i'm away so i can't be there but whenever i've been in the past i've really send enjoyed it and saturday the second of september it is. the second there we are yeah, yeah. get in touch with madam mayor um, yes Jackie love Jackie love very interesting yeah. Yeah, um, she's now before we get our guests on uh chris um there's a bit of a, a problem at the south of the town at the moment with a road closure which, if you're trying to get out to Lewis, is not much fun at the moment if you're uh, an Upfield resident. So tell us with your councillor's hat on just a little bit about that road closure, how long it's going to be closed for okay. and, and why it's closed and that kind of stuff. 
Okay, okay. You, you, I mean, you know, but other you'll be aware, Ian, and others. I'm the county councillor for the southern part of Upfield, so uh, obviously aware of what's going on and sort of get the background information and knowledge about it. Uh, there are two phases of roadworks in Lewis Road. Uh, I suppose it's better to get it all over and done in more or less one hit. The current phase is work that's being done by Taylor Wimpy in connection with the Ridgewood development, with, with the Ridgewood Place development. The work's being done by their contractor. Uh, this is for traffic calming, uh, pavements, other related work. We've been waiting some time for this to take place. It was all down, the, the date it's going to be done was down to how many houses were built and how many houses were bought finally got to that point uh, the work started on monday it runs to the 4th of august so it's another two weeks but there is that road closure from the horse little horsey roundabout to new road so not the whole of uh, lewis road just part of it along there but there is access for people who live in uh, live in uh, live in on the ridge of the state they can get through there but it is close on the back of that there will be a second phase of work which will start on the 7th of august uh, which is uh, resurfacing repair work gully work uh, and other work on the full length of uh, Lewis Road from Little Horstead right up to the Highlands Roundabout. The big difference is that the current work is daytime. The second phase of work, which is being done by the County Council, uh, will be night work. The okay. road will be closed from 7 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that won't interfere with the okay. activity in the town during the daytime. But I appreciate there will be people okay. who live along there who may be disturbed at night. But they do try and when they work at night, they do try and keep it as quiet as possible it's a very very difficult situation for the council to yeah. know when best to do it no it's a it's a no-win situation it's a it's a tough decision least yeah. worst option that's where we are so please look out for those uh events but you know the the second one in particular is good for Rockfield. you know get lewis road prepared get lewis road better get the drains better beneficial but a little bit of pain along the way i'm afraid that's it yeah, thank you thanks chris for that um yeah so if you're heading out to lewis basically from Rockfield, just leave a little bit of extra time plan your journey um and go out on an alternative route. Now, we've got a couple of guests with us today. Um, we are uh, delighted to be talking High Street. We have Mark Arno uh, from Carvilles, and we have Sean Byrne from the Electric Bike Shop. First of all, uh, good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, really good. Good. And we have Sean somewhere on the M40, I believe, from the Electric Bike Shop. Hello, Sean. Uh, hi there, Ian. Yeah, I'm on the M4 at Chiefly Services, so... Uh... It's probably a first uh, uh, live podcast uh, from uh, it's like a greenhouse in here though with a glass <laughs> roof. Um, so it has some IT issues, mainly temperature issues with uh, um, um, my uh, devices overheating. But uh, we're all good now. I've got the air conditioning on. Okay, right. excellent, good stuff. So somewhere on the M4, Cheveley Services. You're very Chibley welcome. Services. You're very welcome, Sean. Lovely to have you both on. Um, you know. Our, our high street is something that I, I often get complimented about when people visit Upfield from uh, a different place and they come to Upfield for the first time. They go, wow, this is nice, isn't it? What a nice lot of shops in Upfield. What nice big wide pavements you have and all that kind of stuff. And guess what? There's free parking as well. That's fantastic. So people that don't know Upfield, Upfield and come and visit us, they sort of wax lyrical about it. So um, <laughs> let, let's have a look, little look at the high street today. Um, uh, you're, you're both uh, involved with independent retailers, um, very different sort of models in terms of uh, Carvels as a single store, uh, covers a fairly wide geography for the for the non-retail side of the business. And Sean, you know, you'll tell us a little bit more about the, the you know, the growing um, business that is the electric bike shop across the nation. Um, but let's ask you, first of all, Mark, um, when did you open in, in Upfield as an independent? And, and I suppose why Upfield? In the first place well uh yeah carvels predates me uh my we, we are actually the oldest established shop in, in Upfield now, i believe um we've been here since 1933 wow. um, uh, so yeah um but um the the premise of opening the shop in upfield was the original um carvels head office as it were was based in lewis um and um they wanted to to, uh, they had workshops were in Uckfield. They set up workshops in Uckfield in the 1930s and wanted a shop here. Um, and then I think we were a very different business. We didn't actually uh, have a great deal of footfall. It was all going out on on calls and appointments on our uh, specialised workshop side of things, curtain making, blinds, mm. reupholstery, all the stuff we still do. Um, but that was the basis of the whole business then. It really, uh, I think very few people actually came to the high street as such, you know. 
Uh, whereas now, obviously, a huge number of people come to the high street, um, and um, but we still retain that side of the business going out and about. So 1933. Wow. Predates you, of course. Yeah, yeah we. Yes. You didn't have to say that because we know that. Of course, you know, but, <laughs> but anyway, Very obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and Sean, let me come to you. Um, so you've been in up for Electric Bike Shop a, a relatively short time. Um, tell us for how long and, and why? Why did you choose Upfield as a destination? Oh, we can't hear you, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> we can't hear you. There we go. Well, well, <laughs> I knew this might happen. Um, no technology for you isn't it a wonderful thing when it I'll doesn't work sean come out and then try and come back in again i think is probably the answer so um sorry about that but i i, I think i can answer the the question i think it's about three years upfield uh the electric bike shop have been in upfield uh, and there you can see some a great array of their bikes so they are um in the bell walk car park um next to sussex beds um so they're not on the high street itself they're just uh, tucked around the corner there. Um, and hopefully Sean can join us again. But yeah. I know that we were having a few difficulties with the connectivity earlier on. Um, yes. Chris. I think they're a, very good, they're a very good addition to the retail offer in Uckfield. Uh, obviously, sort of, uh, very sort of modern um, business. Uh, Carvel's traditional business, sort of house, house uh, soft furnishings, household goods, you know, great reputation, great products, you know, great things they do. And perhaps on the other side of the fence, um, having the electric bike. I walked past there this morning and there were, there were people outside being, having bikes demonstrated to them, you know, activity going on. So uh, good to see the uh, response and activity that is there. So let's hope Sean can come back in and tell us about why they came to Upfield. Sean, are you there? Uh, am I? Are you, you, are are you right? reading me? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we are. Sorry, sorry yeah. about that. So, um, I think lessons learned, don't do it in a car next time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it was by accident, really. We came to Ugford. I was uh, I was meeting with a CEO in uh, Dorking to look at a, a property there that uh, uh, Lawson's uh, were uh, were offering. So uh, we had a look at that site, and, and both of us decided it's not really for us. So we popped into the Lawson's office, and they said, "We've got this one that's popped up in Uckfield. Now, I I live in Worthing. I've lived in Worthing all my life, and um, I know Uckfield. I know Sussex, see Sussex West, Sussex quite well. So I knew of Uckfield, and I said, "Well." That's pretty good location, given it's uh, it's a uh, central location covering Eastbourne, Lewis, Brighton, Hayward, Heath, Tunbridge Wells. It sits right in the in a, in a good pocket, rather than going to a to a big uh, big town or city. We went and had a look at it. The rent was right. It was opposite the bus station. It had uh, all of the the right sort of uh, bits and pieces that we need. It was the right price, so we said, "Let's give it a go." So, uh, and I, uh, and as I said, I know Duckfield. I walked up and down the high street. Not a great deal of competition, um, and um, uh, uh, and that's how it started in Upfield. Very, very good. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, nice little story. I like the bit about opposite the bus station. So, if if the bike breaks down, you can get the bus with your bike <laughs> to your shop. You'll fix it, and then you can cycle home. Does anyone do that? Yeah. Well, it was normally to attract people that. Uh, find it quite mundane uh getting on the bus all the time thinking i could i could ride this i'm only doing three yes. miles or four miles why don't i go and get course. a bike instead of great, sitting on this bus with all these people coughing and sniffing <laughs> yeah yeah good uh, very, yeah very thought-provoking very good so, so just yeah. moving on from there why uh why for you did you bring the business to upfield you perhaps touched on it but just uh, perhaps a little more detail on that. Uh, what are the, we know upfield has got lots of virtues and lots of good things about it, but you know, did you, you, you yeah. saw those, you saw big opportunities? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the demographic. We, um, we appeal, the electric bike appeals to um, people that aren't necessarily cyclists, but people who want to go cycling. So maybe people that have cycled in the past um, and they really want to get uh, back into it. They just can't, um, uh, they, haven't, they can't really, um, uh, they don't really like the thought of getting sweaty and uh, and out of breath going up a hill or going somewhere and not being able to get back. So electric bikes uh, really appeal to those people that just want to give it a go again or start cycling to get fit. Now, I know the demographic uh, around Huckfield. Um, we appeal to, we, we call her Mrs. Miggins. She's our, she's our typical um, uh, customer. Um, she likes the tennis club. She likes going to Waitrose. She's got a bit of disposable income. She might have a little dog she put in a basket, but without doing, being too stereotypical, <laughs> semi-retired, retired people who, who, 
who just wanted to keep fit um, without putting too much effort in uh, and do the right thing or ditch the car. Um, and Uckfield, yeah. is, Uckfield itself has got that type of demographic, but also surrounding it with uh, all the way over to Horsham, Hayward Heath, Tunbridge Wells. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of people that um, have got a bit of spare uh, cash. Uh, and, and there's lots of good cycling around there. The South Downs. Uh, I don't know the Cuckoo Trail, but I keep hearing it mentioned. Very good. Uh, South Very Rick good. South Downs link. So there's a lot of good cycling around there as well. So your yeah, customer, yeah. your your typical customer, isn't a mammal, a middle-aged nope. man in lycra. Definitely not. Definitely not. It's, it's something no, other than not. that. Yeah. And that's one okay. thing we're very keen to uh, to make sure our um, staff are uh, are aware of. But when we recruit people to run the stores or, or, or to work in the stores, we don't want elitist cyclists. We don't want mammals. We want people that uh, regular people you can go and talk about uh, 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 about a bike and not about tech, uh, the technology, blinded by science. It's, it's all very straightforward an electric bike, but you can get caught up in watt hours and uh, Newton meters. And there's no need for a lot of that. Just be fairly straightforward. And our customers appreciate that. Sure. It's people who want to cycle without without a fuss and people who want to people who want to enjoy it and, and and benefit from it without getting complicated then indeed let, let me yes. let's move, let's Absolutely, move us yeah. on if they want to be able to go and talk to somebody yes yeah yeah sorry okay. guys well, I'm, to move us on a little bit if we if we can because we we've we've got a finite amount of time uh, this afternoon this this lunchtime um just around the benefits of upfield high street versus the larger town centers uh, Mark, you know, how would you answer that question? Why do people shop in Upfield compared to TW or Eastbourne, do you think? I think it's a, a more relaxed environment. Um, the free parking is obviously very valid. Um, Upfield is very lucky in the catchment area it's got, has been touched upon it. it we have got this a great town with a great number of, of villages and that are a sensible distance away and people in those villages can make decisions as to where they want to go so if you're in newick for argument's sake you could be Haywood Heath, upfield now upfield is obviously a smaller offering but actually a nicer offering um and it's amazing how many people we get from those outlying places that you might think i mean crowborough is a classic case where it's uh, a big town but actually the shopping in crowborough excuse me if you're from Grover for saying this, but the approach shopping is not as good as in Uckfield. Yeah. And I think that's primarily because it's too close to Tunbridge Wells. And so therefore yeah. people, if you if you were going to set up a business that was thinking, well, I'm going to drag people out of Crowborough, you'd probably think, well, I could probably get something in Tunbridge Wells. So so Crowborough has suffered by virtue of that, whereas Uckfield actually has got a, a has got a catchment area and we're just, just far enough away from those other towns. Um, and then we get a certain amount of people from the larger towns anyway. So we get, there's sort of, yeah, we with the shop side of things, we we're, I'm on a Saturday. If I'm in the shop, I'm always struck by how many people say I've travelled up from the coast, or I've come down from Tunbridge Wells, yeah. or or wherever it is, and it will Haywards Heath, and it's just it's interesting how many people actually come to the town and enjoy the town. So yeah, I mm. think uh, we're we're fortunate that we're far enough away from from a magnet type draw. Um, yeah, and yeah. back to interesting the, back, to, mm. back to the free parking as well. Yes, Doesn't indeed, hurt. indeed. Yeah, yeah long way that continue. Important. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, um, yeah. we've got yeah. someone else a question in the chat here uh, to Sean, and we must come back to him on this one. So remind me, Chris, if I forget, uh, do they hire out the bike? So we'll try and come onto that one a little yeah. bit later on when Sean returns, because I know he's got connectivity difficulties uh, in his uh, electric car while he's sitting on the M4. Um, he's coming back with us in a minute. So, um, Mark, okay. let's move us on to the footfall in the high street. I mean, the, the footfall varies, of, of course. Uh, you've talked about the attraction of people coming in from other towns. Um, what, what are the busiest times for Upfield? You know, when are you busiest in Carville? Um, being the, the, the thing I would say to my mind, a, a high street, well, part of the appeal of it is that it, it has got fresh air and it has got natural light. Um, but what it hasn't got is therefore a roof. Uh, so therefore, all the things that make a shopping centre uh, desirable, and you could quantify by saying this day will do that, that day will do that. Yeah. Um, in a high street, it's a very different thing. You will naturally get Thursday, Friday, Saturday will probably be busier than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But if you've got sideways rain and it's a Saturday morning, um, people will do their food shopping if they need to. Um, they're not going to go sit outside Hartfields and have their breakfast. You know, mm. so it's the, the, the experience. I mean, yes, you will get 
you, so so that there will be days where it will be better. We like the weather to be settled. So basically, if it's going to be sunny, let's have it sunny the whole time. So therefore, it's not novelty value, and therefore people mm -hmm. aren't just snatching that window of opportunities they see it to have a barbecue or do this or do that. Um, and by the same token, if it's horrid, I would like it to be horrid for a little bit, steadily horrid, uh, so that <laughs> then people get into a habit and they get they dress appropriately and they're not caught out and they decide they're going to come anyway. Um, yeah, we've found that what we've done is this is sort of jumping onto another question in a way, but one mm. one thing that happened with COVID is that we made our uh, show, the fabric show, which I'm sitting in here, all these books behind me, um, we made it an option to have appointments. And that has been absolutely fantastic for making us, for weatherproofing this side of things, I'll put it that mm. way. Mm. Um, previously, I could have had a wet Saturday and I might have not seen anybody. But if people, if I've got six appointments, four, I wouldn't make six on a Saturday. It'd be too, it'd be too busy. But be it, say you had four appointments on a Saturday for an hour to an hour and a half each, those people will turn up on time with a copy in their hand and you will be able to look after them and they won't have anybody in, getting in their way, dripping on them. They've got the... Mm. So it, it's changed things significantly. Um, so the appointment side of things, has, which we've retained, has, has, has proved to be brilliant. So that means, dare I say it, you, you know which days are going to be busy because you can, to a degree, create that footfall in key areas in the shop. Excellent. Right. Very good answer to a, to a yeah. uh, straightforward question. Thank you so much for that. Um, Sean, you're back with us. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Sean? Doesn't look like he can. Uh, Chris, do you want to move on, Let's to, move on. to yeah. the next question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I'm going to ask about the impact of COVID and you know, things which fo followed on from COVID. Obviously, you know, three years ago, we were we were shut down. We weren't doing things. We then had the subsequent lockdowns as well, which did interfere with business and had a very bad effect on business. You know, you've, you've told us perhaps a benefit I, I, yeah, yeah, I, amongst the storm we all had to suffer but were there other other things around covid that have changed or the impacts I, you had i i think um yes obviously covid you know we like all businesses that were you know most retailers put it that way we had to shut and that was yes. that um you had to just think on your feet really so um we realized that there were certain again back to this fabric room i mean um we realized that people were still very interested in doing stuff to their homes so we had a bizarre situation where we would um take calls or emails determine the sort of thing people might be interested in uh shortlist a certain number of books we would then put them in a van in the car park they would <laughs> ring when they arrived in the car park we would then zap the van from a distance they would really? then open the van, decant the books into their vehicle and drive away. Uh, they would then go home and we would maybe do a WhatsApp or a chat. We would see what they were looking at. They would say, well, we quite like this, don't like that. Da, 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 wow. Da. And then yes, yeah, we, yeah, at yeah. a predetermined time, they would then on the same day or four days later, whenever, they would then bring the books back, put them in the van. They yeah. would drive away. Reverse we, process. Would, we would then put them in a room for, for 72 hours those books oh, right. yes yes yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. nobody knew yeah. you know um and um they and then and it works and it, it works and yeah did. you got you got the order you got the business you move we, things on we kept in the to keep going without obviously being at, having the shop open which obviously would have been illegal so yeah it was, yes uh, yeah yeah so but, improvisation uh, intuition uh, yeah it, it works and, and i would say the the the, the, sh the shut we built a wall between the shop and the showroom which we would never have had the guts to do to be honest with you uh because we would have thought it was it was going to impact too in, ba badly but because of that people relished coming in and having the showroom to themselves and <laughs> we, we wouldn't change it back now they they really enjoy it so we've we've found a, a <coughs> benefit um yeah. as regards the shop side of things i think yes it's you know the high street in general i mean upfield is quite a busy high street but i think in general um is is pretty much there where it was before um with regards yeah, to good. Football. just habits have changed people people's habits have a lot of things have changed you know oh, oh, yeah we all, we all do things differently including shopping but yeah and have, have no, from, from what you can see and what you can feel you've got back to pre-covid levels okay doing things a bit differently but you're yeah. where you you'd want to be you where you're where, where it's heading, yeah, heading in the right direction and i think um yes i think generally it's good to hear. yeah it's positive, it's positive. Let, yeah, let's it's ask good sean good. the same question yeah, sure um uh, you're back with us thank you um 
pandemic hit many businesses hard, of course. Um, how was it for you? And would you say you're back to pre-COVID levels, recovered? Uh, well, it's it's reversed for us. Um, okay. uh, it's it's completely the other way around. So during COVID, um, uh, during the first lockdown, I, I still I was working for Evan Cycles, and uh, and I left during during the pandemic and went to to work with the electric bike shop. But um, the government uh, um, uh, let uh, uh, bike shops open as uh, seeing as an did. essential. So we were way. we were allowed to open all the way through uh, through lockdown all the lockdowns. Um, it was an interesting time when I was working for Mike Ashley, and that's why one reason why I left Evans and came to the Lettery Bike Shop. But that's for another day, over a beer, yes. won't maybe one day. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I came to the we, we opened uh, in January uh, 21, so we were in part of a lockdown then anyway. Um, and people were panic buying bikes, um, they couldn't go on holiday, uh, they couldn't go uh, do any, uh, couldn't go to the gym. Um, they, some people still had to work and uh, didn't like the idea of going on public transport. So the people were literally panic buying bikes. And we, if we had more bikes uh, supplied to us, we could have sold a lot more. So it was uh, boom time for the bike industry. Um, yeah. We actually, and that's helped with our expansion. So we didn't have to borrow any money for our expansion. Um, we just. Oh, oh dear, he's, he's gone again. Gone. Oh it's got a really good bit of the story. Of course, you know, yes, how, the best bit. How, how daft that we didn't realise that. Um, Who's not? Is he? Yeah, that actually it was a, it was a a real benefit to the cycle industry that that COVID happened. You know, real turnaround for most businesses. Massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah incredible. Yeah. And so you know, you were literally selling out of bikes, were you? We couldn't get enough bikes, so we we had um, orders. We were selling bikes that we were hoping to get in six months eight months a year's time and our order book um of um, selling bikes we didn't have was huge so we were extremely nervous about getting hold of the bikes and the suppliers the, the manufacturers were frantically um, building new factories uh, making new depots new distribution right. centers so so the upshot of it is we basically mortgaged the, the next three or four years sales uh in in a short space of time mm. so um people are talking about getting back to pre-pandemic levels we are actually in a worse situation now because all of the big guys that make bikes have uh, increased their production and there is a glut of bikes um okay. there are too many bikes oh, and right. not enough people buying them so then you get uh, pricing problems you get margin erosion uh and, and in some cases a race to the bottom you know we've tried to protect ourselves with margin support from some of our suppliers um, but it's a tricky game at the moment. So we are well, we are well below pre-pandemic levels um, because we've sold all of those bikes during the pandemic. If that yeah. if that all makes yeah. sense to you, yeah, yeah, so yeah it, it does make the world has been and gone. Mm. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it's tough, tough at the moment. Sure, sure. Yeah. while we've got your connectivity, still, I've got a question in the chat for you. Someone's asked a question: Do you guys hire out bikes? Uh, well, we're looking at a thing called subscription. So. Um, we we have to change the way we uh, our models work. So uh, it's the the affordability and ability to 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 pay for a bike because they're quite quite chunky. So we're looking at a subscription uh, model, which is like hiring it. You can you can subscribe and you get a brand new bike for a lot less money for twelve months. Um, so that should be coming in the next few weeks. Okay. Um, it's like a hire, but you you never really own the bike. You can hand it back. There's no real commitment, um, uh, and, and we're just looking at how we roll that out in the next uh, in the coming few weeks. So, yes and no is the answer to that. So, okay. sorry to be well, that, fake. That's 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 great news. And if if you've got a like a I don't know a, a short blog type article, 300 words, nice landscape yep. image, we'll feature that on the chamber website. We'd love to do Thanks. that and to help promote that scheme out for you. You know, we'd really love uh -huh. to do that here at sure. the chamber. Um, yeah. We're going to rush through these next few questions, guys, because we are sort of behind time here <laughs> in this pod uh, this afternoon. Um, I want to talk a little bit about online presence. We talked about footfall. We talk about, you know, um, the, the weather. We've talked about uh, accessibility to your stores. Um, but, but what about an online presence? How important is an online presence for your respective businesses? Um, and is click and collect the future to, to Mark, first of all? Um, 
an online presence we through through lockdown like a lot of people just thought that my goodness um we're going to be having to sell everything online and we didn't know obviously how long lockdown and and the ramifications of it was going to last so uh we 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 sort of threw money at, at, at website um with a view to getting as much stock onto it as possible um in reality what we've found s subsequently is that our strength is customer service footfall people coming in the experience the whole high street experience and actually unless you're one of the big players or you're selling high value lots of high value items online a website is actually quite quite expensive and unwieldy thing to sell things on um mm -hmm. and as i say we would we click and collect was fine in the in lockdown because obviously you couldn't come into the shop so it made complete sense but for us now we've actually realized that the website is much better as a as a brochure in essence yes. uh, rather than having stock on it um mm -hmm. and that way we get people through the door who are in but rather than and the other thing which, which um, Sean touched upon is also, I think, particularly with branded items, um, websites can be just a rush to the bottom. You know, you you're getting no service, but you'll get you. I mean, we have it here where someone will come into the shop and they'll look at something, and then they get they get their phone out and they say, but "I can get it for, you know, twenty p less down the road." You know, whatever uh, it is, and you just just get, that. and it's like, well, it's it's, it's retail. It's always been the same, yeah. but not quite to the same level. And that's, but I think with but at least at least if you're in the shop and you can talk to somebody and you can show that you're going to give service, they might think, oh, well, actually, okay, we'll spend a little bit more or we'll meet them with it or we'll have a conversation. But if it's just online, it's just a click. They're just looking, they're just, someone's just mm -hmm. looking through and is looking for the cheapest option. So for yeah. us, it's, for us, it's a brochure, but not a sales tool directly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Mark. Um, Interesting sure, to hear sure. Sean, do you have, um, do you have an, uh, forgive me, I don't, What's your online presence like for the electric bike shop? Can people go online and buy a bike? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, as Mark was saying, it is it is a, it's another shop for us, uh, and it's yeah. a it's a, a very important shop. Um, people can uh, want to do their research. Um, they want to see uh, what one bike is like to another. But uh, again, as Mark said, what they'll end up doing is uh, so I can see that bike at that price. Let me see what if I can find it at another price, and and they may come back and say, "Well, I found it." for 100 pound cheaper or 200 pound cheaper and they go into the store and say do you price match well I, I get my guys to say to the to the person in front of them um why are you standing in front of me asking me that question clearly you want to buy the bike from us because we're local clearly you want to buy that bike because you, you, you we've got a bricks and mortar presence if there's Ooh. something goes wrong with it we're here to support you yeah. there are lots of um there are lots of i call them like little scout huts in industrial estates in the middle of nowhere um, uh, set up a web business to sell uh, sell anything, electric bikes being one of them, uh, and they'll ship it anywhere in the country. But what happens if it goes wrong? You know, what happens if um, Mrs. Miggins gets a puncture or uh, a derailment Ooh. falls off? She yeah. needs somewhere to go, the peace of mind, to, to speak to. Yep, yeah, and, and you, just dropped, you just dropped out again. But I, I witnessed that in your store in Upfield on Tuesday. When I was in there taking those lovely pictures that we had up earlier, um, and there was a guy come in and he had his bike and he said, oh, "This is wrong with it. That's wrong with it." And your guys were all over it and helping him sort it out. So I, I get that. Yeah, I've seen, yeah. seen it in practice. So, yeah. that, so that's good. Um, Chris, let's move on yeah. to. Um, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, to yeah, I just want to say no. I think no, just, just just talking very quickly that both Mark and Sean have been in on two things: value and service, which many mm. people which you don't get online. You get value and service by going to the shop, by going into the high street, you know, talk about it, you get support, you get back up, you can take it back, you can sort it out. You can't get it online, as we're all aware. But let's move on. Um, there we talk about Christmas. Christmas is, uh, people, are starting to, people are starting to talk about Christmas, goodness sake. Uh, but Christmas is important in the uh, retail trade. Um, just um, perhaps both of you can tell us how important it is, what your preparations are when you get ready for Christmas. Where are you with Christmas? Albeit a seem, seemingly a very, very long way off. But... Christmas yeah. is coming. It's please it's tell us about your, your, your plans for Christmas, please. Uh, well, yes. And the, and uh, the night shopping that we have as well, which we're Ian may yes. well mention later on. Mark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It would. It wouldn't be Christmas if Ian didn't mention late night shopping. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no. Um, in all seriousness, no. I mean, it is obviously it's a key time of year for for us and for most of the high street. Um, absolutely, the the orders. Will have been placed months and months ago for this Christmas stock. 
Um, and then we do, we start, it's almost like a countdown, to be honest with you, you do, you, you know, we, we know the day we're going to do the Christmas window, we know it, it, it's already there. Um, it's all there. So, yeah. you know, literally, it, I mean, it, it, the, the date for the Christmas window, the late date for late night shopping and, and the bank holidays are the only yeah. things that actually get written in the diary because straight away, because you know, they're going to happen. And then, <laughs> you know, uh, and that's it. That, that be- happens at the beginning of the year. And so, yeah, we're yeah. all, we're all, yeah. we're all ready for it. Not wishing it away, actually. Let's enjoy some summer. <laughs> um, yeah. when, that, when, will my, you, when will you have Christmas stock ready for sale? When will you have Christmas stock on the shelves? Oh, we, we, we really, we just, I, I, I'm very, old-fashioned about this and i really don't like it too soon i really really i hate that sort of september you know school holidays finish and yeah. it's out yeah, i appreciate yeah. that some businesses do it um so particularly some of the garden centers and things because obviously the garden season's finished for them so they they get it out and and the concept being obviously that you only tend to buy some of these things once so particularly things like decorations and things if they can sell you a decoration in september you might yeah, see you know, you might see a nicer one in November, but you've already bought one in September. Quite, yeah, quite. Uh, yeah, but on yeah. that premise, on the, and that's what supermarkets have to do. So you end up it's earlier and earlier, earlier. But we we won't have stuff out until November. We just won't. Right, okay. You know, we might, okay. It might. We might. We'll we'll have conversations with customers in late October because they'll be asking throughout October, because media you know will be pushing i mean you know the marketing of of the great big stores will already have kicked off an interest well, the tv just... adverts will be there won't they late october yeah, they'll, be, they'll be talking about waitrose's video or whatever yeah, it is yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, that, and that, that gets fed into the newspapers in september and october so yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and sean where are you with christmas what are your plans for christmas where do you when's the christmas market start for it's uh, it's not a thing for us it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not a. It's not a thing. It's, not. it's uh, no. We. Um, I mean, I. I, I worked for uh, for Argus for um, for fifteen years, and uh, um, back in the nineties, Christmas was. Um, it's a third of third of the business in a, uh, two thirds of the business in a few short weeks, with elect- with bikes. Any any bike retailer, uh, we call it peak trading as as most retailers do. But peak trading is the summer for uh, for yes. bikes, so it starts uh, end of April or sort of around Easter. Uh, grow steadily through um, through uh, March, uh, May, Mar- uh, May, June, July. Uh, peaks around now. Um, August slowly it slows off a little bit. Um, September a little bit of a dip. October drops drops right off. We see a little bit of a jump in in December, but it's it's a minor bump Not because much, yeah, yeah. people aren't. Uh, it's not the sort of thing you buy as a Christmas present. No, no, uh, no, 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 but what no. we feel as a, as a as a retailer that our our job is to support the, the local retailers, support the the local chamber, um, be part of any festivities, any activities that go on, be open for the late nights. It's all about brand awareness for us. Mm. That. You may not be thinking about buying uh, a two and a half grand bike for uh, for your husband for Christmas, but you might be thinking about it in uh, in March or April. Yeah, quite. And we're yeah, here, quite. So, yeah. and we want to be yeah. seen as part of the uh, local business community. But yeah, which is which is very important to, to have that and to, to be open that evening and to, to be welcoming and to people people to come in and ask questions and make sort of pre seasonal pre season inquiries. So you'll be t- you'll you'll be participating in the same way as Carlos will be participating then. Well, I think, uh, is it Nick Lawson? I can't remember. Uh, is it um, Chris. Um, Chris Lawson? Chris Lawson. He offered to dress up as a, in, as a Santa, uh, Santa Claus and, and be driven around in one of our cargo bikes. So uh, oh, well, there we are, then. one yeah. day I'll take yeah. him up on that. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Very good idea. <laughs> I, I'm not going to make any comment about that at <laughs> all. Um, yeah. but, but there we are. Look, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to miss a couple of questions out and goes, arguably we could have had either of you on and not you together. You've got enough to talk about to fill uh, much more time. Uh, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, but um, I just want to finish on this one is um, what, what more can we do to encourage footfall in, in Upfield? And, and should we have an increased shop local campaign? Would you like to see the chamber do more? What could retailers together do more in Upfield to, to, to Im- improve our footfall still further. Sean first. Uh, well, yeah, I, um, I I know I've been dropping in and out, but I did hear, hear some of Mark's comments about uh, the benefits of shopping in Upfield, and uh, the bits that I heard were, were absolutely right. It's a uh, it's a good destination. Um, I mean, arguably, people would say there's much more to do and see in Brighton, uh, but it's uh, 
it's difficult to get to, the traffic is appalling, parking is expensive, uh, it's too busy, and it's a horrible experience in my in my view. <laughs> Upfield, on the other hand, um, you know, bigger pavements, free parking. The, it's a great place to come and have a cup of coffee, meet you, meet your friends, uh, have some lunch, maybe have some dinner, um, and it's it's more of a sort of a, a destination. There's a lot of roads that go round Duckfield, but people do tend to go in and and, and see what it's about. Um, it's quite uh, it's quite niche, but it's a great place to go and um, just just have a chill. So um, I think you need to sell the benefits of that. It's just a great place to yeah. come. Come and meet your friends and have a cup of coffee, have a sandwich, or uh, have some lunch while you're here. Yeah, well, a lot of people yeah. that come to pick up their bikes from us, um, we'd say to them, just just go off and have a cup of coffee. Um, yeah. Come back in an hour, your bike will be ready for you. You know, we'll, we'll have it built, we'll have it serviced, whatever it is they've dropped it off for. Uh, and they come back, and um, sometimes it's two or three hours because they're uh, they've got carried away. Uh, well, that's such a good time. Yeah, yeah it's good to hear. Yeah, good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, go away I, with memories. So there we are. Yeah, I don't think it's about. Uh, uh, necessary local shopping is about bragging about the fact that it's, it's just a, a, a nice place to come and, and chill out. Good, yeah. and I guess you'd concur with that, Mark, would you? One hundred percent. I think that's the point. It's shopping is now an experience-led thing. So you know, we need we need these good coffee shops. We need the nail bars. We need the whole yeah. bit, the whole things, all the things that online doesn't offer. So people can come out and exactly as Sean said, enjoy that experience. So it's if they need to, but but if they need to nip in, nip in. But if, if they actually want to be here for a while, and the other thing I think also is the key. I would say is education sounds a bit pretentious, but is that all is retailers knowing what other retailers do, so yeah. that the word of mouth thing. So when somebody comes in and says, "Can I get a whatever?" that you've got a team of people who actually know what else is in the town. So it's yeah. almost, like almost getting your team to walk the length of the high street and say, right, what do they do? What do they do? What do they do? Because otherwise, I think a lot of people, particularly if they're not local people, and a lot of people who work in shops aren't local people, um, have no clue. Uh, and sure. that knowledge can cr sort of cross-pollinate the shops. And, and that's the sort of thing that would work. I think that's, that's a great idea, Mark. Yeah. Um, I think certainly on the back of this podcast, um, we'll put this out, obviously, um, on the Chamber social media um, channels, um, the link to this podcast after after we've finished. And we'll, we'll, we'll mention you guys. Um, I think, you know, you're both on Facebook, um, uh, Electric Bike Shopper on Twitter as well. Um, look out for it on LinkedIn and do share it with your clients, guys. Um, and then maybe have a chat with some of those retailers, especially you, Mark, you know, the people you know well in the high street, you know, you, you, George Mosses and others, you know, have a chat with these guys and get them to to, to, to listen into this, you know, so have a listen to this because yep. uh, it'll be really good if we could get more retailers listening to this discussion and um, collectively doing what you've just suggested there, Mark, in supporting each other in some kind of, not cartel, that's that's not the right word, but, you know, just community. <laughs> promoting each other's business. Um, in yeah. The community. yeah. But I, I, I think those comments, Mark, no, do reflect Upfield as a whole. You know, we're a small town, smallish town. Uh, we're compact. There's a great sort of great soul to Upfield. There's a great affinity community in Upfield. And that's obviously within the retail community as well as the wider community. And one of the yeah. great virtues that, that Upfield has, we, we touched on wheeled on the field and late night shopping and, all the other, and the carnival, all the other things we do, which people enjoy so much, which people come together for. So I think it also, to me, it sort of, it all fits that tapestry, which I think is tremendous and to our great benefit. Uh, Business-wise, community-wise, people-wise. So, excellent. Excellent. Good. Good. Well, look, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Mark Arno, thank you. past president of the Chamber, of course, in, in 2003 and four, a long time ago now. Maybe you should have come back for another go, Mark, at some point. Yeah, and and to Sean, Sean Byrne as well for joining us from the M M4. Uh, really good to see you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're welcome thank you. to stay thank around, you. or if you need to drop out, feel free to do that. Um We've, um, we're just going to cover off some parish notices now, um, some of the chamber events coming up. So um, our producer guy, if you've got that, uh, Gordon, if you've got the chamber stuff there, that's great. So we've got a few events coming up. So thank you to, to Mark and Sean. Really good to have you guys on. Yeah. Um, this next um, this next event here, well, the first event I'm going to talk about is, is a little bit different. Um, we're going to have an informal lunch on Friday, the 4th of August. Uh, this is at the UK Cube. They're on the industrial estate, um, sort of opposite um, Green DIY, if you know where that is. Um, any business can come to this. You don't have to be a member of the chamber. So you can go on to our website and book a ticket for that, a sandwich lunch and some drinks provided as well, all for eight quid. 
uh, plus the booking fee. And that's Friday, the 4th of August. Uh, and then moving on later in August, uh, two weeks later, we're at the Highlands Inn again. Uh, Highlands are a great uh, member of the chamber. We enjoy having events at the pub. Uh, maybe we should do an evening meeting at the pub as well. I don't know. But this is a breakfast event we have here. They do a great cook breakfast. Now, the speaker on this occasion is an old friend of mine, a guy called Jeremy Taylor, who used to lead the Gatwick Diamond business group. And he is a very entertaining business speaker. So he's worth coming to the breakfast just to listen to Jeremy. And everyone gets an opportunity to stand up on their feet for 60 seconds if they want to present their business. Chris, you're well used to doing this kind of networking event, aren't you? Uh, very much so. And these meetings, they're very, very effective. They're very well supported and uh, people enjoy coming to them. And the, the, the breakfast at the hard end, so come for that, if, if only for that, it is excellent and uh, well worth £12. But that should be a good event. And uh, no, this pattern of events we're getting into, these breakfast events, they're very popular. They're very well supported. I've had people chatting to me recently saying, we're coming, we're coming. So the numbers are building already. So uh, get in early, otherwise we'll be sold out. Yeah, we might be sold out. Now, again, you don't have to be a member of the chamber to attend a breakfast event with us. Um, but what happens generally is if you're not a member and you come along, you end up joining because you've enjoyed it so much. So, yeah, so it's there a very we good are. showcase for the chamber. It's, it's a very, very, very good there PR go. for the chamber. Yeah. Um, then um, we go online on the 6th of September. One of the, the great legacies of the pandemic, we've spoken about the pandemic quite a lot today, is that we've kept the virtual networking. Of course, when COVID hit, everything was online. But we've kept this once a month. We're going to miss August. But uh, we're back uh, online on Wednesday, the 6th of September. This is an hour on a Wednesday morning between 9 and 10. So if you've got kids and you've got to do the school run, it'll be back to school by then. Uh, or, you know, you've got to get other stuff done in the morning, 9 o'clock till 10. You've got time then to join us online. Again, everyone gets a chance to speak. Now, our speaker on this one is Catherine Colas. Really important subject. Um, she is an authority on the menopause. And uh, you'll be really surprised the number of businesses that don't pay enough attention to this important um, uh, gender related issue. So it, it, it is uh, it will be really worthwhile listening to Catherine on the 6th of September. And then we move to our uh, autumn members meeting. Now, we just had a really good meeting at Bluebell last week. Did you enjoy last week, Chris? It's very good. Yeah, fantastic venue. I'm going there again tomorrow for a breakfast meeting. So oh, yeah, yeah. That twice in a week, but beautiful venue, uh, fantastic setting, and uh, another reason to join the chamber to come to our summer event at the Bluebell Vineyard in Dane well, Hill. That was a sore point because um, Gary might as well join us now. Gary, come and join us in, in, in now online. There he is. There he is. Good, 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 good afternoon. Tomorrow, aren't you? Uh, yes, we are. Yes, yeah. Mim and Davis, the MP. Nice. Well, there you go. That's that's what the president gets, you see. President yeah, gets well, invited, invited and the vice president as well. <laughs> I feel a bit miffed about that, but I can't go anyway. But you know, tell me, guys, how that breakfast is. Anyway, we're not talking about that anymore. Um, this also <laughs> members meeting, uh, we've got this on the uh, 20th of September. It's on a Wednesday. Now, this is the first time we've visited Chady Heritage. Um, Chady Heritage Foundation are a chamber member. Um, we were going to go there or, for the March AGM in um, in 2020. And of course, it didn't happen because of COVID. So event, we're looking yeah. forward to visiting this place again. This is for members only. So uh, if you're a member of the chamber, you can put your place now online. But if you're not a member, you've still got time to join before this event. And then you can come along to it. So I think that's all we have for now on the event. So we've got one more. Is the yeah, oh, oh, we're going to talk about the community awards now, Gary. So um, yeah, these are coming up in the autumn. Tell us yeah, all about yeah. these, my friend. So um, we last ran the Community Awards um, back in 2019. Again, COVID uh, interrupted uh, things. But it's uh, a chance to celebrate the achievements of local people uh, and groups, charities, teachers, organisations uh, in and around Uckfield and uh, across uh, most of East Sussex. The awards are taking place at the East Sussex National 24th of November. And this year we're holding the event in conjunction with uh, the Uckfield Volunteer Centre, who, who during COVID also started started uh, a, a 
an awards uh, ceremony, uh, not on the size scale we've, we've done the community awards at the East Sussex National in the past, but there are 13 categories, uh, including Care of the Year, sponsored by uh, Cooper and Son, there's Charity Fundraiser of the Year, uh, sponsored by Upfield Motor Services, and Emergency Services Person of the Year, as well, sponsored by uh, C. Jane Thorne & Co. I say, go to the Ashdown Radio website, ashdownradio.com. On the front page, there is a link, and there's an opportunity to to nominate individuals, groups for all these categories. And every nomination gives you a chance to win a pair of tickets as well uh, to the uh, the awards dinner uh, on the 24th of November. Uh, so nominations all open at the moment, likely to close at the end of August. So more details on the front page of the Ashdown Radio website. Thank you, Gary. And the Chamber Sounds of Commerce... Like we are sponsoring Teacher of the Year. Um, now, this category, so, so, some categories have been taken when I when I basically made a decision to sponsor an award, but I was really pleased this one was available. I think it's really right for us. It's a really good fit. The Chamber has a very good link with education. We have a number of educational establishments as members of the Chamber, and we work with the college in particular on trying to bridge that gap between education and the world of work and uh, supporting the development of employability skills amongst young people. So I'm really pleased that we are sponsoring Teacher of the Year. So if you've got your favourite teacher out there, anyone watching this, you know of people that are at school, got favourite teachers, make sure you vote for them, and then we will decide who is the Teacher of the Year at the Community Awards. I can't wait. It's going to be really, really exciting. Yeah, so, very good. Very good. Of course, um, ne next year we've got, we've got Upfield Business Awards. We have this alternation yeah, between community yeah. and business. So we start, we'll get, start to think about we business, start business. as well. We have, and <laughs> yeah, we haven't got time to ending. talk about that today, though, Chris, you know, because we are over time. We are five yeah. or six minutes over time. So our next podcast, we're not going to do one in August, but we're back on air again. Put this date in your diary, Thursday, the 28th of September, 12.45. And our guest on that occasion um, is Johnny Phoenix of um, the Phoenix Health Hub in the high street. Johnny's a great guy. We're really looking forward to hearing what he's got to say about, you know, making sure you've got the right posture when you're sitting in front of your laptop and all those kind of things that I don't do very well. So um, my thanks to Chris Dowling for joining me as co-host. My thanks to Gary for coming on at the end and Thank saving you. the best of last. Uh, to Mark Arno and Sean Byrne. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>